everyone, and welcome back to the Dog Show Drive with Wayne and Will. I am Wayne Cavanaugh. You are, and I'm Will Alexander. Indeed, you are, young Wayne. I just mumble that Will Alexander. All one word. Uh, anyway, this weekend, we're going to talk about two great shows in Doswell, Virginia, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and also some discussion about grooming space and the topic that has come to the surface there. A little bit of sportsmanship again, and inside the mind of judges, the things that we think of as we're selecting and sorting good dogs. All that and more right here on the Dog Show Drive. So you're sporting the Maple Leafs cap here, eh, Will? Yeah, I am. Hey, I watched the Rangers wings, Red Wings last night. and that guy, Panarin, he's now got, I, first of all, I love his green goddess salads. And I love the drive through That guy's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, oh, that's it's Panarin. the bread man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 12 consecutive games he scored now. Yeah. And seven of those are double, you know, more. I think he, maybe two pointers or three pointers on some. He's on fire. And on his team, of course, now with the Rangers, which is so weird. You watch hockey one year, you give a pause, you come back, and everybody's on a different team. <laughs> but you got Debrinket, too. Uh, from, they're both from the Blackhawks, right? Yeah, and Debrinket's yeah. now on Detroit, right? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, it's like, no. But Al, our guy, yeah, Debrinket's with Detroit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Under, yeah. Um, but, and the discussion there was how short Bedard's stick was and how um, <clears throat> Debrinket has a little tiny... He said it's a kid stick. He said it has to get it. I don't think I don't think uh, a stick is short. I think it's too big for him. Um, <laughs> they were talking all about it last night. Yeah. About his short stick. Never mind. Let's move on. Well, well, well we, you know, you started off Maple Leafs. So I have a Maple Leaf thing to say. Okay. <laughs> Austin <laughs> Matthews, who now leads the league in goals. From Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. Phoenix, Arizona. Austin yeah. Matthews, our savior. Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> leads the league in goals. He has 13 goals. Well, it came out this morning on Sports Center that he has more goals than the entire San Jose Sharks have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, San Jose. Sorry, Sorry San man. Jose. <laughs> <laughs> and All right. You're going to need to get the pads on because everybody's losing goalies, too. Oh, my God. Jack right? Carolina. Got, oh, and Jack Campbell's mm-hmm. going to put on waivers. Yeah. Now he's going to yeah. ride the bus for $5 million a year. <laughs> Uh, well, if you and I keep talking about hockey, we're going to be put on waivers, too. I know, I know. Anyway, <laughs> big weekend. We had a great weekend this weekend. Um, a couple of big shows. There was also a show with 176 dogs entered, 23 sporting dogs. Where? Texas or Oklahoma. I think wow, Texas. Wow, 176. I think our show was bigger up here. You know, it's just... And then also, I don't know how far in Texas, there was a 490 or something. But I talked to one of the judges and he said it couldn't have been any more boring. You know, he actually oh, he said he said judge. I could have been home enjoying the weekend um instead of doing one, 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 none. Yeah. But whatever. like it's 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 true that when you get to the end of the day and there's seven dogs in there, there's usually seven good dogs in there. Yeah. But it's getting there, you know. It is. And really, you know, I understand that there are areas of the country where you can't get big entries. I totally understand that. I know we're spoiled on the East Coast. I know we're spoiled here in the Midwest. You know, we have plenty of options. And I understand that when you're out in the middle of, you know, of the West, uh, even California now, you've got long distances to go to shows. So I don't want to make it sound like uh, it's everywhere. But also we've had them in New England where there's usually $2,000 entries. When there's space wrong, we're at four or 500. So it's not just geography, but it, it does make a difference. And in California, you've got to go quite far uh, to get to a show. But, you know, uh, I don't know what to say. I can say that if they keep gouging people and making it so damn expensive to go to a dog show, you're going to lose a lot of people. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Your son was at that show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is Doswell, Virginia. First of all, let's make it clear. Great show site. Great dog show. People are unbelievable. They had like a crock pot cook off or whatever it was. I mean, they have good stuff going on, but 250 for a grooming spot really got a lot of people upset uh, for two reasons. One, that's maybe a record uh, for the price of a grooming spot. 
and the other is that they were small spots. They were five by tens, but cramped sort of. And that the area that was open, uh, that wasn't reserved and paid, you had to leave your everything, you had to take everything out every night and put it back in. Your crates and the tables and your everything. So, and that seemed like punishment to me for not paying. Yeah. Oh my God. But you have to. to. I think back in the day, even or, 80s that was our hotel expenses 250 yeah, really. <laughs> right so wow. the the good news is it was straightened out and the people in the free area did not have to break down every night and take everything out so it worked out well but but it got the topic going um where brody had a great spot he was thrilled and you know it was a free spot but he's he there's plenty of room to do it it was just the fact that you had to leave and come back and for electricity the drops were outside in the tent in the heated tent and they charge twenty five dollars to go groom your dog out there. <laughs> so, the, the the message is, um, you know, the market will bear what will bear. So handlers can spread that among their clients, but several of them said yeah. it's not fair to our clients because, by the way, you don't need one two fifty spot, and you need four, six, right. ten. So depending on you know, how big your string is. So, I was talking to a couple handlers uh, in Fort Wayne about it. And they said, I didn't even realize this one. They're laying out thousands and thousands of dollars months in advance to keep spots reserved. So they're out of pocket five, 10 grand. And when you come up to Orlando, you're out 15, 20 grand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just before you get in the ring. And people and, don't realize that too. Like, Right. So, you know, my son, for example, he's got one dog. He... Uh, if he bought a spot and he thought about sharing it with some friends, you know, three people had one dog a piece. Uh, that would have been 250 plus his hotel, plus his gas, plus his meals, and he's in the ring for five minutes. Um, that's a thousand bucks. If you so I'm not I'm not saying it's not it's never been inexpensive to be in the sport, but if you're an owner handler with one or two dogs, do you want to spend a thousand dollars every week? And that's 50 grand a year, by the way. Um, do you want to spend that just to try to finish your dog and maybe get some grand points and just to be there and be involved? It's some it's, of them. It's untenable. And and yeah. except when especially when especially when um you know that people who make a living doing it can spread the expense and you can't. Yeah. You know, there's a disparagement there that needs to be addressed oh, well, I, when i was a handwriter that was one of my when i talked to over with new clients it's cheaper for you to use me than for you to go to the dog show so it is there's no doubt there's no doubt and you know and you get what you pay for in your case uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well that's all folks that's all <laughs> back to hockey <laughs> but <laughs> and it is a topic that uh, it was almost good that it happened because it got some great play and some good oh, I think, play up here you know yeah and i think it was good discussion too most of it was healthy and there were some clubs that said hey you know um don't we're class Doswells is great and there are quite a few shows there and a lot of clubs jumped in and said by the way we don't charge that much at Dos at our shows in doswell so don't paint us all at the same right. with the same brush <clears throat> and i know it's expensive to put on a show You've got to charge for stuff, but there's got to be a way to make it more equal for everybody. You don't want. Now, what we kind of entry did Doswell get? Do we know? I think fourteen, fifteen hundred. Oh, so it's not like they needed the money. It was coming in. The entries are good entries. You know? Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's. I guess it's just a matter of trying to keep those one or two, those people that bring one or two dogs. Without them, <laughs> there's no points. There's no entries. Right. You know, you need them there for sure. And if you're going to keep the sport alive, those are the people that have kids or family members that might introduce the sport for growth. So, you know, you can't, you can't just cater to handlers. Um, you have to make it so that everybody feels welcome and fair. Can you imagine if that was the first show for a young family? They'd never mm -hmm. come. Nope. They'd be like, no, I'm not nope. spending this to go show my dog. It was a great idea. I'm have fun, do a family event, but that's mm -hmm. a huge expense. You know, it is. young family, my God. And if you're, you know, if you know you have to break down and get out every night, then you're thinking, why me? I don't even think there was electrical drops in that 250 area. I think you had to go out and use the tent. 
No, that couldn't be right. And they had to, they'd have to have electrical drops for the handlers. Yeah, maybe it was just lose their minds. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it was just the free space, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and you know, pay what you pay. The club makes what they want. There's no fault of theirs. They they did put it in the premium list. People knew it was coming. It just brought up a topic that needed to be brought up, and that is how expensive it is to go to dog shows and how fairly everyone should be treated, be they handler, breeder, owner, or whatever. Um, that's a you're right, Will. If it's a family in their first show and they went, that sounds a good like experience. A grand, and we didn't get a ribbon in the American bread class. Um, hmm. Yep. We were only in there hard, for a few hard want to come back, hard for repeat yeah. clientele that way. There you go. There you go. Well, I was okay. at the last big show I was, I was at, I was in a, I wasn't at a show last weekend officially. I had, I had hernia surgery on Wednesday. Yes. So that's why we didn't have. Well, that's why we didn't have a show last week because I yes. was unavailable. Um, but the week before, I was at the Trillium Dog Show, which is one of our our premier dog shows up here. It's run by Bob and Elaine Whitney and Bob and Margaret Rowatham. Uh, well, a wonderful show, just a wonderful show. I had a good panel. It um, Ann Ingram from England was there. Oh, Joe yeah. Walton was there. Uh, Espen Ng was there. Wow. Joe, uh, David Kittredge. Like, it was a good panel. Espen, Espen, uh, clothes got lost in, at the airline. So he, I first walk in and there's Espen and he's wearing this suit that's just too big for me. And look, I'm like, that's not Espen. Well, Joe Walton had lent Espen a suit. <laughs> I'm like, where's Espen? He just said, right here, stop it. <laughs> well, that's quite a panel, Will. Oh, it was a great panel. Bob and Elaine, David Kittredge, too, right? David Kittredge, yep. He was yeah. there. He, um, it was a good, good panel. And then on Saturday, we had the, uh, Elaine always makes us sing the national anthem. And if if uh, if she doesn't have a guest sing it, she makes what she calls the Trillium Chorus, chorus sing it. I'm part of the Trillium Chorus, so I get to go up there and sing. And she hunts you down until you're there at 8 <laughs> o'clock to sing the national anthem. Well, then on Saturday, we had James Westman sing. Well... He wasn't as good as the Trillium Chorus, but he's a professional opera singer. Opera singer. He, he did okay. You know, okay. <laughs> I tried to give him some tips, you know, to <laughs> sing from the diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he thundered out both national anthems. The place was vibrating. It was so amazing. You sing the American national anthem up there? Yeah, too? yeah. Why? Because we have American judges. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. And in hockey, you always play both. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A little hockey, you remember these things, right? Yeah. But uh, but and that fall, usually the Trillium falls on Halloween, so Elaine always has a, a costume day where a lot of people dress up. Elaine dressed up as a nun, and and Bob dressed up as a as a minister, as a as a I guess yeah, I guess a minister. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were avoiding lightning strikes all day long. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. I had oh, such a good time. I was so honored to see them at, in uh, at this conference I did in Canada. That was they were just having them sit there was really royal. Too. Oh, they're wonderful. They're and they're coming down to Kalamazoo to judge in a week or two. Oh, good. good. Yeah, they'll yeah, do so great. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the shows that I went to uh, in Fort Wayne. Oh, by the way, what else about Trillium? Well, you went to you went as a spectator, right? No, truly in my show. I showed. Oh, you did. Oh, you did. That was the week before my hernia surgery. So I was there to show my my yeah. dogs, and I had fun. What's the setup like there? What's it look like? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it's okay. a big open. It's 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 our version of the Big E. It's a, a Lindsay Fairgrounds, and yeah. we have a lot of shows there now. And it's it's a great. They have great restaurants, good hotels. It's just a great place to have a a dog show, and and they can accommodate. Like it's a huge facility. So if smaller clubs get there and they only get like four hundred dogs, they can rent half of it then truly rents the whole thing because they get a bigger entry um but yeah. it, it was it's a it's always been one of our premier shows because the two bobs and elaine they make it exhibitor friendly they make it you want to be there you want to be at the trillium dog show so they don't charge you 250 no i don't i don't think they charge anything <laughs> <laughs> you know it's those are the shows that make it work it's not only because it's a great first of all a great panel that's going to get you more entries than anything. You oh, can for sure. save money by finding some judges no one ever heard of do nine groups, but um, you're not going to get the entry unless you have a good panel. And making it an exhibitor-friendly site, like I knew you knew Bob and Lane would do, 
that's a big deal too. Oh, uh, that's great. So, you know, having a hotel, having restaurants. I know it's not easy to get these sites. In fact, did I dream this or read it? I think the Doberman National, the hotel, was sold. Uh-oh. So they were able to cancel the hotel. Well, I hope you don't dream about those things. So it's... I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the hotel had to cancel their contract, and they're looking. Boy, if it's not Doberman National, I apologize, but I think it is. That lost their site. That's uh -oh. rough for a big yeah. national like that. So yeah. they're looking for a place. And uh, on a side note, Sunday Espen's clothes showed up. So when I walked into his ring, I said, "Espen's here." <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Did you bar borrow the big suit from Joe Walton? And you could have. He had to borrow two, a suit two days from Joe. Wow. Uh, during the day on Saturday, he dressed. He show. He he judged in his regular shows clothes, his yeah. civilian wear, as I call it. Yeah. But then he did best in show that night, so he he was insistent on wearing a suit. So he went back to Joe's suit. Um, yeah. <laughs> You see it once in a while where judges wear should you know jeans and a sweater or something. I don't mind that if it's an emergency. Or... Well, that's what happens. I, I remember I was showing to Raymond Raymond Urick at the Kent Kennel Club, and I get there and Raymond's wearing shorts and a and a button up summer shirt, and he's going over the beagle. And I've known Raymond for years; he was my assistant for years. I said I didn't realize they'd let the groundskeeper judge here. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't have lost luggage or just was being comfortable? He lost was his he... clothes. Oh, he lost his clothes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's I why didn't... when I fly now, I, I my suits are in carry-on. Yeah. I was in, uh, this is a million years ago, back before 9-11 and back in the good old flying days. In uh, British Airways, uh, this is when I was working at Crufts doing the commentary. I uh, had all my suits in my suitcase and the whole suitcase got lost. Yeah. So they said, not a problem. Here's some men's stores that sell really nice clothes nearby. You go buy yourself a new suit while we're waiting for the clothes to come. Those days are gone, Will. <laughs> Those days are gone. But uh, yeah, they took care of it. The, I don't know. I, I can't stand carrying stuff on anymore. Uh, uh, I, I just, I've, I've, I heard too many horror stories, people losing yeah. their clothes. So I just, I have a, I have a carry on that I got from the Arrow Club. And I, it works perfect with three suits. I couldn't get more than three suits in them, but three suits. Yeah. But I have suits. I tend to uh, just borrow Joe Walton's. Yeah. Know. If Joe's on the panel, you know. He's on the panel. <laughs> you can only lose it if Joe's on the panel. <laughs> but I had, I, for some reason, I was in a hurry to leave for Fort Wayne and I threw an extra suit in. I don't know why. Oh, I know why. I wasn't sure if I had this one even tailored yet. It looked new in there. I didn't even oh. notice I had it. But I threw it in there. That may have looked like you were wearing Joe Walton's suit. Exactly. So I thought, <laughs> well, I better bring an extra suit. I don't know why. I guess in case that one didn't fit when I got right. there, I threw another one in. And it's a good thing because I had, the next day where I wasn't supposed to be there, I had to be there. So okay. I was fortunate. To, I didn't have two shirts. Don't tell anybody. I had one. But <laughs> I'm sure they all know. <laughs> they I'm all sure know. They all know. Wasn't he wearing that's weird smelling. Oh, I that's, weird sm <laughs> <laughs> that's what that smell was. But you know who always looks good? Bobby Hutton. Oh, God. He yeah. always wears a beautiful suit. Oh, he complimented him. Shiny. He has that commanding voice. Yeah. And he's funny. <laughs> he is funny. He's very funny. Yeah. This was a great panel. But I do want to talk about Fort Wayne. First of all, the building's beautiful. And years ago, the lighting wasn't great. but And that's a long time ago. But they've the lighting is beautiful now, and lighting's so important in these buildings. Yeah, it really is. You know, we had uh, a specialty in a barn at Perry, Georgia, a couple of years ago. You couldn't see. Nice building, but no light, and it was really nice to have that. The place is immaculate, and they set it up really nicely. It's a long enough building where they had thirteen rings in a row, and they had all the grooming right next to it on the other side of the aisle, and everybody had space and. It's just a beautiful show. But the other thing is, it was a really good panel. And that's how you get a 1,500 dogs. No, I'm not saying because I was on it. But, no, no. but, um, but 15, I am. I'd go to the show to Wayne Kavanaugh. <laughs> I overdrew. So I was very excited with myself. Overdrew by quite a bit. But that's because it was a sporting dog concurrent. I didn't know that. So, so I wasn't very impressed with myself after I saw that almost everybody doing sporting dogs overdrew. <laughs> <laughs> walk in there dude mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> i am mortal <laughs> but boy these um when you get breed entries that are this size and this quality 
And remember, Fort uh, Doswell and Fort Wayne, they're drivable. You can go to either. It's not easy, but you could. Yep. And they still both drew 1,500 dogs. And the quality was unbelievable. I had 27 or 28 Springers, um, a ton of specials. And they were all really good. And that's true for every breed that I judged. At Golden, they were all, I mean, one after the other, you had great selections. American Water Spaniels. This little woman came in. There was a bunch of people that came, but no one knew who they were. They all came in and they all had beauties. Uh, the Clumber specialty uh, was extraordinary. I was really honored to do that. I had, I really did have four or five Clumbers that are just outstanding. Maybe, well, one's the best I've ever seen, uh, but just outstanding, Will. And where do you get that? Yeah. So what they did, and I'd not, I don't think I've ever seen it before. They had a concurrent sporting dog show with the all breed, not after, yeah. not in a separate building, right there. So some people had to decide whether they wanted to show, and they, it was hard to juggle a judging program schedule, but they did it. There were no problems with that. But um, the the clubs somehow made it work and they did a great job the sporting dog ring where they were judging anyone who got to judge at that show judged mostly in that ring but they did judge in that ring and of course doug and jamie set up this table that was just as you could imagine you know the trophies were beautiful the the plants the things they had going on the feathers a pheasant stuffed pheasant um it was just beautiful and I don't know, I don't know how this happened. You know, Carol Rappaport, who's making all these crazy rosettes? Yep. Evidently, the night before this started, uh, Jamie or Doug said to Carol, well, you know, maybe we could get some bigger rosettes than the one we have. She whipped up overnight. Whipped up in her kitchen. These things were unbelievable. And they had feathers in them. And I mean, they were just so creative and so beautiful. So all the little touches were there. And um, the entries were great. The people were great. Britt Young did a lot of those uh, the next day after I did. Another young judge. And no, by the way, when I say young now, I mean under 70. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was at the restaurant, the Holiday Inn, and, which is, again, you can walk right across. Well, it's a busy road, but you could. It's right across the street from the showgrounds. Um, beautiful. So you get down for breakfast in the morning. Well, the second morning, I didn't have to be there until nine. So the judges oh, all luxury. left. Luxury. Yeah. The judges all left at 7.15. And it was all, it was great fun. It was Ann Uhas was on the panel and Adam King. And just, you know, we had a great time at breakfast. But I went down by myself the next day. Well, the server, who was also the bartender at night, was a hoot. She was absolutely wonderful and so there's no one in there but me because everybody else left so she sits down at the booth and brings her coffee and now we have a chat and um oh she's just so special so full of love and just one of those people that warms your heart and she said to me i don't want to say anything but all your friends that are judges yeah she goes uh they're old <laughs> Oh, none of them are listening. Jesus. <laughs> she said, I didn't think a couple of them were going to make it out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no. It wasn't that bad. But, <laughs> but you know, we are, that's the state of, of the union. Yeah. When it takes you that long to get groups and that's how old you got to be. And by the way, these are vibrant people who go in there and stand Oh, for sure. Can you hard imagine hard. calling Ann you old. old? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> what no. <your> headlock. <laughs> Energizer bunnies. Yeah, they really, and just at the top of their game. So fun to watch. But And Adam King's another one of the young groups, right? Yeah. Um, and Megan Basil Reese, or right, I'm always going to say her name wrong. I'm sorry, Megan. But you get Megan, Britt, Adam. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of where the younger layer is. And that's, that's the ones I can think of. Well, Doug and Jamie, they're not that old. But, um, and you know, Doug is just, what's that guy's name? Dick Clark. 
He's yeah, never, Dick Clark. He's never yeah. get old. He does look the same, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> but um, you do. It's it's. I think it's getting better. People are learning to go get these CEUs. Yeah. Um, but I observed American water spaniels under Dana. I had that chance. And when you get it, there was only seven of them or eight of them, maybe. But when do you get a chance to see that many good ones? Yeah. One spot. And that's that's a number that is a good number for that breed. So if you if you get that kind of number in that breed, you are pulling it, you know, I think. I I think the national only had nineteen. So to have seven in Indiana was pretty darn good. Like our Harrier Nationals. Like I'm like I'm 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 glad they moved to Aldi last year, but that probably increased their entry. But it, it was nice to nice to I'm sure Eddie enjoyed having. I think he only had like did he have twenty? I don't know. No, but close. Yeah. And Fox Sounds were not a big entry, but they were bigger than they've ever been. Yeah. Right. And I knew Eddie would draw good there. It was a great idea. This is what we're talking about. It's the Beagle National. <clears throat> they tagged on Harriers and Wolfhounds. Same not day. Wolfhounds, Harriers and, and I'm sorry, Fox Sounds. Fox Hounds. Yeah. I got Wolfhound on the brain. Oh, well, because I went to a Wolfhound kennel yesterday. That's yeah. why. <laughs> we'll talk about that, Will. Oh, I had to, I, I I'm up here i to we have to further education as well when we apply for new things and i'm applying for wolfhound so i had a kennel visit with joss and gagne i had so much fun oh my god she's she has some beautiful dogs and it's it's like they're all happy to see you and some yeah. of them were you know they're they're big dogs so they bump into you because they bump into you because they want to be with you so bad mm -hmm. i started thinking oh my god clark because clark my movie is sort of like that he wants to he pushes me to you well i met one of her dogs and he was bigger than clark obviously and he was he just wanted to hang out with me he just he yeah. just he just leaned on me the whole time mm -hmm. but my god she had puppies there and she was showing me all the little nuances of the ears and the the, the bone shape and the fill in the front and the shit mm -hmm. and the underlines oh it was, it was a wonderful time mm -hmm. and i met some dogs that are stamped in my head now and it's mm -hmm. it's it, i was really happy i was so pleased and honored that jocelyn would do that for me so. oh, she's wonderful yeah she's she really so is and beautiful wolfhounds too but they all are leaners wolfhounds are leaners if they like you you will be leaned upon all the whole time and, and they wouldn't she but she was they're so good because she had she has these huge paddocks like acre paddocks yeah. and there'll be three here or three here well she'd say well i just want to see you you two stay there and then they wouldn't and they all would come yeah. out. <laughs> the best. oh i just miss mine so much um but there's a time when it's time uh great breeds Anyway, I don't anyway, know what got off topic there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to know about that. I, I knew you went, and and wolfhounds, of course, are fascinating to me. Oh, but, yeah, and but I, Fort Wayne, I've had, always loved the breed, and I was oh, uh, they're the best. Forward to judging them, so yeah. Well, you won't get many. Um, no, we but, get good wolfhound entries up here. Well, like yeah. you, you go to an average show, there'll be ten wolfhounds. You know. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. The thing about wolfhounds is it's sort of like um, there are a lot of breeds like this these days. I always think of bull terriers when I think of this, but you don't get any breed entries at the all breeds, but you go to their national and there's 400. Oh yeah. And they're and all set up around the ring in their sandals and there's dogs yeah. laying everywhere and you're trying to get through. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. And then when the specials come in, it's like a thundering herd. You know, yeah. It's like the breeders cup. Is they're all coming in thundering hooves. I used to show for this one years ago and Judith Ryan, she had a bunch of wolfhounds and I went to the house one day to see the wolfhounds. And we were, she, she was taking me for a walk. She had a beautiful log house in the woods. And, and all of a sudden there was no wolfhounds around. She, I forget, she, I forget if she called or rang a bell. Well, it was like Jurassic Park. These trees were coming down. This pack of wolfhounds came up to the house and, <laughs> and they just missed us as they went running by. <laughs> You're lucky if they just miss you. Sometimes when Kill would come running back to me, I could tell if it was snowing. I'm like, he's not going to be able to stop. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> and he tried to grab your arm on the way by. I don't know if he was trying to bring me with him or what, but he'd loosely grab your arm and try to bring him with you. Oh, oh I missed that boy so much. I'm anyway, um, the it was I saw Tim Catterson was there and it was great oh, to see him. It yeah, was great to see him for a while. There. Yeah, it was just a, a great, a really, I don't know. I came home to show and I said that was one of my most fun judging assignments ever. Because the quality was so good in the breed. Uh, in each breed, and the sporting group will. Ann Uhas did it, and she came out and said, "That's my Westminster." It was that good. She, there were dogs in there that she'd given groups and best and shows to that didn't make the cut. That's a strong group. 
Yeah, for sure. That's a real strong group. Okay. And all, oh, my owner handler sporting group. Whoa. You never know with those. But the, the Springer was first was beautiful. Uh, the clumber bitch was outstanding. And it's not easy to get a clumber bitch with enough substance and head. And she was beautiful. I and I had many others in there that were just gorgeous. And it was it was a pleasure to do it. You have to work at it, you know? Yeah. But because of all the stuff, I was the last, I did hounds too, but I was the last group. Best in show was already, the regular best in show was already over. And so you have to sort of fly through them. Here's a question. If you do that in your country, way up there, in Canada. In the uh, northern cold the tundra north. of Canada. <laughs> Even barren though wasteland. Even though I'm farther north than you are in parts of the country. Um, the... When you ha if you do all the breeds, do you have owner handler groups or breeder groups or anything like that? Once in a while we do, but not officially. But, um, but if we, go ahead with your question, I have the answer. Well, we I it was a big group, twenty six dogs in the sporting group. It was a big owner handler group, and I already judged half of them in the breed. Right, I gave them all their owner handler best of breeds, most of them. Why am I checking testicles and? bites and touching the dogs and going over them and i just did them yeah, up here the rule is you don't have to examine them again right in group right you have to individually move them and i'll mm -hmm. tell you when bob moore was judging his individually moving was bring them in one at a time <laughs> they go around <laughs> the ring he'd make his cut do it oh because they already moved yep that was individual <laughs> yeah. oh, remember yelling to bob I, I said i said are you gonna be how enthusiastic are you gonna be today he'd say keep the truck running <laughs> <laughs> well i did um i did, you don't have to do uh teeth and and balls i just but you do have to touch them so i touch them on the head <laughs> and and then you do have to move them again because they could go lame. You know, it could oh, be different. Sure. That's, that's why Bob moved them one time around the rink. <laughs> yeah. But you, you know, you don't want to rush, but when they're packing up and you've gotten to the point where everyone before you was having, a, you know, a longer time in the ring because of the entries. But it's just great fun. The other thing that I was able to do was have some breeders with dogs and not necessarily for points, but just to learn of some rare, less, you know, less popular breeds bring some dogs out to show me and go over them. And I really enjoyed that. You know, I love chasing them down going, Hey, Hey, you don't know me, but I've never seen a stencil line before. Can I go over, take all your dogs? Out? I want to go, who's this crazy man? <laughs> but you know, always want to learn. Always want to learn, bud. Well, you know, well, I'll tell you what I did do this week. I, uh, I had the surgery on Wednesday. So there was a show on the weekend in, in Orangeville, which is the credit Valley dog show. It's a nice show. And, uh, but Charlie Lovelace and Liz Muthard were on the panel. So I felt pretty good on Sunday. So I was, it was a 40 minute drive. So I drove up to see Charlie and Liz because I hadn't seen them for a while. And they both had issues this year. So I wanted to yeah. make sure that they were okay. And <laughs> you wouldn't know they had any issues. They were no. perfect. <laughs> you know, Charlie, I don't know. Charlie walks a hundred miles. And every, he chases those dogs. But you know what? That's his. That's how he does it, and he stays. And he, and he doesn't waste time. He's not slow. You know, he's mm -hmm. fast. He's fast, but he follows you all the way down and back. No, he does. Even <laughs> when he pulls you out, he pulls you out and walks you to the spot where he wants you. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it's beautiful, and I like when he goes down the line. Go step forward, step forward, step forward, step forward. That's how he makes his cut. You just step forward, step forward. The rest of you go. Okay, boom, boom, boom. But yeah, you had big entries to sort, and you know, it, I was talking to Britt about this. We were talking about, I should have left more in the cut, or I shouldn't have had so many in my cut. You know, it's it's hard to get it down to where you exactly want that number of dogs in your cut. And it can't be the same number, Yeah. especially in the classes where you might have 10 in one class. Well, do you cut that? And then you might have 14 in the next. Well, maybe you should. Um, it's just... It depends on the size of the breed, size of the entry, and the quality of the entry. Because quite frankly, sometimes when you have 20, you can look in and go, well, those four are going to place. What am I going to do for fifth and sixth to keep them out here? And other times you're like, no, I want them all to stay. Yeah. And you want to give them their time. you know. So it, it's one of those things that you keep adjusting like, uh, like a baseball hitter, you know, adjusting his swing for each situation. 
Well, but we have you just, to, because you know, each situation is different. So yeah. like I've been, I've judged where you want to just pick four, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. And then when I did, I did a group in Delaware. I made a cut. You know, I, yeah. I, I those dogs were so strong. I wanted to make a cut. So, and sometimes you, they're so strong you don't want to make a cut because there's ten or twelve you want to pull out. You don't want to get that many out there. And send four out of there. <laughs> Let them all think they were going to make the cut. Let yeah. them all think. You were all fifth, every one of you. They're all in the ring. They're all in the running there. <laughs> but you were talking about concurrent specialties. At Credit Valley, they did the exact same thing because really? I walked in and there was two rings full of sporting dogs. And Ainsley Mills was judging one of them and David Schwartwood was judging the other. And I said, what's going on? Why are we? And they had good entries, big entries in labs and big entries in goldens. They ran a concurrent sporting dog specialty at the really? same time, and it worked out well. But it confused me because I'm like, which group is this, right? Yeah. But it yeah. was – they did. And I it, guess – In big entries, that's probably why. Oh, yeah. And it's a separate group, too. Yeah. Uh, they have a separate group for it. Well, I often – it's really a Mensa puzzle because it's four days of shows. Some people can't get there on week, you know, on weekdays if they're working, and uh, some people can. The handlers can. But do they want to show their dog that fifth time? And what if they're, I mean, they're probably going to have a conflict and don't want to stay in the sporting group breed for an hour, um, missing other dogs. Uh, and on top of that, if it comes down to it and you're running for the number one, um, that's not points for going best in show. Uh, you can get 1,500 points over here, 300 over here. Um, and it you know it becomes kind of a, a Mensa puzzle. But I thought it was great and it was handled so well. And of course those guys just, you know, they didn't know how to do it. It was just yeah. put together so well. But uh, I saw I saw some people I haven't seen in a while, which is always fun. And uh, yeah, it was one of those weekends that it's just a nice, nice, good sized dog show with, especially for me in sporting, I'm a kid in the candy store with all those there, but. Uh, no, no question. Uh, at one point, like I was watching at the, at the Credit Valley show, and there was a all, there was a huge group of uh, lab specials, and then there was a huge group of golden specials side by side, and it was it was fun to watch. It was oh yeah, yeah. Hey, here's one for you, Will. Um, when you have your lunch break, what do you do during your lunch break? Everyone asks for what? Pictures. 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 So you maybe didn't get breakfast or maybe the hotel only had that, you know, frozen bagel and uh, yogurt from 1972. Yeah. And now you're hungry and you got to be on your feet all day and you need some nutrition. And by the time you're done with pictures, there's no time to eat. That's an interesting conundrum. That's a tough one wanna... because you want to say yes, because they, your honor, they want a picture. I like it better um, when the photographer's right there and they go on your ring and do it. Yeah. Then you're but when you have to go and find the photographer and mm -hmm. wait there and look, because then you have to sometimes wait in line because Wayne's got the same lunch break and he's getting pictures yep. as well. So it's, it's uh, yeah. And the photographers don't follow you around anymore. No. Uh, Evelyn Schaefer used to come running in the ring, Billy Gilbert, with their big format cameras, put the thing, one shot of film in, hope it worked. My, I always talk, like I've talked to this with my, with Garth Gorley, he's a photographer up here. I think they would make more money in the long run if they did go into the ring. Because there are some people that, on the oh yeah, let's get a picture. Oh, I have to wait till the end of the group. No, I'm going to go home. You know, right. So you try to, you know, you try to fit it in, but and usually those the people who want to get their picture taken at noon are people who've got a class win or something that's important to them. So you don't want to again, you don't want to say, oh, I'll wait around for the fancy people at the end of the end, end of the day and you have to stand in line waiting for all the group winners uh so you want to get them done but uh yeah it can be a little i a, a friend of mine was judging in doswell and happened to him and he ended up Brody goes dad ken's having a hot dog and a coke at the, <laughs> at the concession stand because you didn't have time for lunch that'll happen you know that's gonna well, happen. stop being so popular ken <laughs> yeah, yeah but it really it's you love to get it done and then of oh, course yeah. You're really, you're ready, right? There's one left. You could get in there in time to squeeze in a little lunch. And it's the dog that won't stand still. <laughs> it's always that one. 
<laughs> I, I, I get that a lot. And it, I don't know if it's the handler in me, but I start taking over. <laughs> oh, I do take over. <laughs> I start taking over. And, all right, take it now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I take over. And if it's someone who has a set, the dog set up poorly, I'm not going to be in that picture. I step forward and change things for them. Say, okay, now you can take a picture. And Kim's real good. Kim Booth, yeah. a lot of them, they're real good at doing that themselves. But um, yeah, it was, it was a fun. Well, a lot time. of them should be judges. Such good eyes they have, you know. You know, isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? Now, is there is there a part in the application for someone that works like that? Because you tell me, John wouldn't be a great judge. Of course he would. John Ashby, come on. Of course he He's would. He's seen a million dogs. He knows exactly. You know, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. But the way they do it these days, the digitals, you know, you can go through the next day and pick your print and off you go. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 great for having all that. But people tend to use those things on Facebook. You know, you save your you don't put your magazine ad if you just want winner's dog to finish. You put it on Facebook, which is cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just uh it's it was fun, Will, and we need to have fun at dog shows. I did get one whippersnapper who gave me some attitude that I I have a long memory, Will. Yeah, I'm Irish. You do. Yeah, uh, that'll well, I had an old whippersnapper that I saw was giving some attitude. Never gonna learn. Never yeah. gonna learn. Yeah. yeah. Well, when it's close, guess what? We're humans. Yeah. Anyway, uh, heading down to Orlando in a couple of weeks, bud. I wish oh, you were good. coming. I'm. <sighs> When do they close? They close next week? Today. Today. Oh, I guess I'm not Today? going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about going. I really, because I, I really do enjoy it, but I think I'm just, it's just, it's a lot. And mm. like, it's that, that close to Christmas. And... The sporting dog summoners are just packed. Yeah. Um, you know, those are just, and there's breeds you don't get to see many. So it's a great opportunity. Now, I was speaking to Sandra Lex last week. She's going down for just the, the seminars, I believe. So. Oh, a lot of people do. Uh, yeah. Many people do. But the, I'm, I signed up for the seminars just in case, but I'm judging Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday uh, when the seminars. There also are seminars on Friday, which is good for me because that's specialties on Friday. Yeah. I'm, judging, I'm not judging that day. So I can get Blinkins in, Will. And that's a big one. Try to get Boinkin points. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh huh. You used to just you used to just go to Mike and Linda Pitt's setup to have a Boinkin seminar. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I will try that too. I will try that too. But um, Linda used to always say, "Well, these guys recognize you. You're going to get some." Yeah. <laughs> Up in it's Canada. True. <laughs> yeah, he, he. They do. I think they still have that client. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they used to always have a, a string of Boinkins when I was down yeah. there. Yeah. And I'm actually interviewing Linda shortly oh, great yeah we spoke this week about setting up interviews so that'll be fun and it'll be i'm sure unfiltered i can't wait <laughs> yeah it will be it will be that'll be great that'll be great i remember she said to oh, me you know who i'm interviewing today you i'm interviewing paul wilson he's the head huntsman of a of a uh, a club in um i think it's i think it's north carolina i'll find out for sure today but he used to be the head huntsman here in london ontario so he has a whole pack of hounds and he goes and takes people on hunting trips and yes yeah, so oh. i asked him for video and so i'm interviewing him today so that man was... i wish i had more pictures when i judged that Bryn Mawr hound show i just i just didn't think of it and i wish i had more pictures because that was a moment i'll never forget yeah you could be like george and find a winslow yeah uh <laughs> Peter Green was the other judge, not when I judged, but the only other non-master hounds that I remember at that point in time, anyway, that ever judged there. Great fun. Anyway, um, so Orlando is going to be, they did set this up in an interesting way. You'd get about 5,000 dogs every day. That's 20,000 points. Oh, yeah. And that can make you number one or number things. two or number nothing. Yeah. So how does it come to that? Even the groups can change things. No matter with P, we had to fly out for that last group. You know? Yeah. Yeah. How? How? I don't know. And the AKC, of course, put it there on purpose for that reason. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, well, if you're in the running, that means you have to be there. And if you're in the breed ring as a judge, you have to completely get that out of your head and say, yes, it's my friend. They're running for number one, but that's not my job today. 
to give them 5,000 points. That's not my job today. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. Um, you know, the, you don't want to look like you went in there to beat somebody on purpose. And people do that, unfortunately. But you do want to go in there and, and point to the dog that you think is best on the day. Right. And that's tough to do. It's real courage. That is very difficult to do. Um, you all run into that situation. And you know, we'll see. You know, I'm sure, you know, you hope to make the right decision and yeah, it's a spur of the moment thing. And but it's it comes down to Tom Horner. You need to be selfish. Yeah, that's true. Interesting situation. And I talked Brody was the one who brought it up. We had a, talks to me almost every night. We get to do recaps of, of the shows where he is and where I am. He was asking a good question, but we we're talking about um of course breed type and then movement and we always say it's the same thing and it is you know if, oh, if a corner sure. doesn't slash its tail and carry his hedge right that's breed type and it's movement but what do you do in these situations and they come up all the time we get a dog just i mean the only one that's the right proportion and the right head and the right coat for this breed the only one but it's not great on its legs. You've got another one that's not atypical, but less typical, maybe a little longer than it should be. As a result, it moves beautifully. Those are calls you've got to make in your head. What am I going to reward today? Is it going to be, it's tough to do because you know the ring size is going to say, that thing couldn't move. You know, what did he point to that for? Because in that breed where there's zero breed type, I got one that has it. I don't want to make that case again. Courage, man. And, and I'm not so sure it's courage. It's it's uh like I remember there was a story years ago. It might have been built in a proportion now, but Nigel Aubrey Jones judging the Italian Greyhound National Specialty yeah. in America, and he ends up giving Puppy Bitch the breed over all these specials. And somebody came up to him and said, "Nigel, I think it takes a lot of courage to do what you just did." And he said it wasn't courage young man it was knowledge yeah no it's <laughs> and, true it's absolutely and, uh, true yeah but, but then you know but it, it's it, I think the courage aspect comes into it because it's a human nature sport it is it is and we're we're definitely you know humans that are humans and can't help it <clears throat> pardon me but yeah when you get in those situations i think it's breed specific if it's a breed that has lost breed type completely and you want to make a statement, you can, but you're not doing it to make a statement. You're doing it because you want to reward breed type. And right. Annie used to say, okay, you know, you first got some breed type and then see who moves the best. That's easier said than done. Uh, it doesn't, you don't always have those choices. Well, because let's face it, if you, you properly proportioned Irish setter walks in the ring, Irish setters have a specific breed type on the go as well when they travel. So if one walks in and it looks beautiful, stand there and it does typical, untypical things, but have become typical. And also a dog that comes in that's not quite as typical, mm -hmm. but he's typical on the go. So that's still a type. It's I, I, it's, it's a hard balance to make because because he's he's more typey on the go than the dog that's typey standing still. It's mm -hmm. a it's a it's a hard call you know? and of course what you see in sporting dogs all day long is they're off proportion they're longer than they should be especially in the they all want that big high flying side gate and uh let's yeah. face it we were talking you were talking about goldens earlier there and saying well it didn't fly around the ring well i was never taught golden should fly around the ring they're Nor almost like a, a, a gentleman type dog when they go around the ring you know mm -hmm. and in English setter, they, same way. You know, same don't want thing, them to yeah. go out like an Irish setter. No, I want I wanted my English setter specials to be on a drop lead dead lead beside me around the ring, just carrying mm -hmm. themselves beside me. Um, I don't want them charging. Irish setters, the chargers, they're the ones that you know they, they should be at the end of the lead, catching you know, high flying, rollicking around those silly rings. Yeah, size is another one. I remember I had a beagle who was fifteen inches tall. I remember walking up to the rim with him. It was banjo when I was finishing him. It was a glass dog. And Pat Trotter was judging, and I walked up to the ring. And um, I looked around, and I thought, I know mine's 15. 
man, oh man, these are big ones. Yeah. And it makes you look like the small one. But Pat's eye is so calibrated. She gave me the breed from the classes and she said, I'll bet this one's 15 inches tall. And I said, I'll bet you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But I have an issue with that because country of origin is 16 inches. So, I agree. I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. So I, I don't know. I, have a, I, really, I think we've missed out on some really good dogs because, I don't know, was it our vanity that makes them 15 inches here in North America? I don't know. <laughs> you can't, 15 and a quarter isn't, isn't good enough to win. But we got to judge by the standard. Yeah, I know. I know. 15 is 15. Iris As Center. a breeder, I remember sitting at ringside with Andrew Brace at the National the year he came. And we were watching sweepstakes, and the, the dog that went second was a lovely dog, but he was a tall dog, and I forget which class. And Andrew said, you think that dog will measure out when he grows? When he, I said, oh, I think he measures out now. He went and spoke to the person. I don't know if he ended up taking it, but he went and spoke to him because it was a <laughs> lovely dog, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what we do. Send him to the country of origin. Yeah. Uh, Irish setters, <clears throat> 27 inches. You ever see a 27-inch dog in the ring? They look like a midget. Oh, exactly. And I love it when they argue about their size. Then you turn and say, well, how tall is your inseam? And then you look at the dog. And you go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. That is absolutely true. And you look like you must dog. be pretty short. You have short legs. <laughs> and that dog's 27 inches. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And it says one inch, or I think it says one inch above and below, or it's acceptable or something. But yeah, about two and three inches, you know, you get them thirty oneers in there. I remember when I was working for George, somebody came with an Irish Setter, and it was his class dog, and uh, it was giant. George, I can't finish a thirty-two inch tall Irish Setter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, you have those issues that you've got to deal through. It's <laughs> never black and white. When you're in there, it's never, and it's never as easy as anybody thinks. I was sitting with Marge Wilson, who's wonderful, just to talk about, she wanted to just talk about sporting dog. And uh, we're, we're z z zeroing in on this dog and having a great discussion. And she said, do you think the judge will find it? I said, I don't know. We had 20 minutes to look at it. Right. <laughs> That's the they thing. Yes, and I, I, I emphasize that in my class all the time when people are complaining about things. You yeah. get to sit outside the ring and watch Wayne's dog for 20 minutes. I get to watch Wayne's dog for two minutes. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's a tough call. Yeah, and it's time management, right? Yeah. You've got to try to sort it out so that <clears throat> you can hyper-focus on the, on the ones that um, you think are going to be up there. Usually when they walk in the ring, because they're coming in, I've got my four or five. I'm not but sure what I'm going to do with them yet. But it's amazing. I'm, as I'm, an, I'm a relatively new judge still, and I'm a white knight. And I compete, so I'm at the dog shows in my area, you know, which I think is great. I see certain dogs and think, oh, how does that dog, how does that dog winning that? How does that? I get in there, it wins. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. After when you, if it's a new appreciation for mm -hmm. everything when you're in there and, and out there, like you, sometimes you get too much time outside the ring. You need to focus in on that package that the judge sees, and then you understand why you lose to that dog sometimes. I had a spectacular sporting dog this weekend. Um, she was beautiful. I'm a little older, but she was beautiful. And I I got my hand between her front legs <clears throat> coming out of the same, both legs coming out of the same hole. And that's one fault. You know, it's an yeah. otherwise beautiful bitch. But you can't see that from outside the ring. Um, so those are places where you have to have your hands too. But typically, in a short-coated breed, hmm, you need to go over and give the massage. I don't. No. I will use my hands to show if it's if it's somebody who knows the breed and knows that I respect and know their breed, I will put my hands in places to show them why they're not going to win today. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Clark used to do that too, especially in Best New Show. She'd walk down and touch what she didn't like. At least that's my, my impression. Yeah. Was, what she wasn't fond of on that particular mm -hmm. animal. I'm a loin spinner, Will. I know we are. <laughs> We've all come to that off. conclusion. <laughs> don't bring me the long lines, please. Just because you can run fast, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and that's another thing, controlling your ring for speed. Um, I had a handler that came in and flew around the ring on the first go around. I mean, like it was hell bent for glory being chased by a cougar. And uh, I said, okay, down back, do what you want. But your next go around, Let's go with half the speed. Half the, and the dog looks so much better. Oh, it's unbelievable. So, we have a young man in our area. This is a very good young handler. 
but he has this tendency to up the speed. Mm -hmm. I always stop him and say, just because this dog can go that fast doesn't mean it should go that fast. Mm, that's a good point. Man. But I, I still watch him on the weekend. He still way goes. <laughs> well, you don't. Is it really nine thirty, or is that the clock that didn't? No, it's eight. No, it's eight thirty. You didn't check. Yeah. You didn't change the clock. I didn't change that clock. Um, the one thing I don't think we talk about much in the sport is how a veteran judge, or you know, doesn't even have to be a veteran, experienced no. person who happens to be a judge, can run a ring to reward the dog they want to reward. Oh, there's no question. There's no question. That's part of the art. Yeah. You know, if you know you've got a dog that's extraordinary on its legs, you're going to move him that extra time with one that can't to let that dog show his best features. Um, if you have a dog that has to follow, is better following, you might do that. Uh, rearrange your class that way. Uh, it's interesting how that works. It really, and and the smart judges. I, I I'm gonna bug you with a story again because I have lots of stories. Maxine Bain. I loved Maxine. Yeah. She was one of my very favorite judges. She judged a national specialty, and she, she brought it down to two dogs and two bitches, two pairs. She brought the two bitches out. I had I had one of the dogs. Took the brought the two bitches out. Take them around the ring, and I, in my head I'm thinking, oh, when she does that with my dog. I am going to laugh this bugger behind me. I mean, there's no, I, I think, so I'm thinking I'm winning. So she takes the two bitches around, stops, puts the bitch she likes over here. And she says, bring these two boys up. Let them just stand there. I thought, oh, I'm not <laughs> winning. <laughs> yes, indeed. You have handlers or breeder handler owners, doesn't have to be a professional handler, that have Nailed that free stack price. Well, it's not even a free stack. She wanted to she or just stay in there. It was she just I wanted this because mm -hmm. I the other dog I showed was a wonderful dog. Wonderful dog. The dog that beat me was the picture of breed type. Yeah. Wasn't the best traveling around the ring, but mm -hmm. picture of breed type. And she said, just let them stand there. And I knew exactly what she was doing, and you couldn't argue with her. She because right. this dog was. He brought he brought you back to he gave you shivers because he reminded you of the old days. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't clever, <laughs> but standing mm -hmm. there, he was a picture. So. Yeah, I think we've all done that. Um, if I've got one that's exuding breed type, it isn't necessarily as good on his legs as the other one. I'm not going to take him around again. No, but if I have one that's really good moving and and that's the one I want to reward. I will take them around again. And I also loved, I find myself doing this more and more often. I pair dogs up, twos and twos. Um, I really like to see that. Too many, it's hard to um, visualize and capture it all at the same time. But if you take two at a time, you can really see uh, a stark difference. And then you can take another two. But I love matching up the twos. You just have to be careful. You don't, there's not an odd number and you forgot one at the end. He's got to get a turn too, so you got to right. find another match. I, <laughs> but, uh, I, I I have a problem with um, and I've I've spoke to judges when I was showing dogs about this, when they would take one dog, and they would run it off against every dog, mm -hmm. and finally I, I one time I said to them, I know you wanted to put that dog up, why did you wear it out? So by the time it exactly. came to point, you couldn't put that dog up. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You don't want to double up. You know, you just take them in twos. That's why you don't have to run them another time, right? Right. But I remember there's, this is, God, uh, 30 years ago when I started judging. And Mike Scott had a beautiful pointer bitch. I mean, beautiful. Oh, I but she wasn't having a good day. Uh, and he tells the story all the time. I never moved him again. <laughs> you're best to breed and you're not. Um, I just, I knew that I would look like an idiot. And that's why you do it, right? I didn't want to look like an idiot. And I wanted people to know why I did it. Because that's always in my mind. I want everyone to try to follow here. And if the uh, if I pointed to her going around, it would have looked ridiculous because she was going to be a jerk. But standing there, no, no contest. So she moved well. I'm not saying that. No, she's just being a jerk that day. And she would have lost it. But yeah, fun yeah, sport. Most of the things that go through our head and it goes through our head fast. You got to classify dogs. It goes through your head in ten minutes. So anybody is bound to make mistakes sometimes in that time mm -hmm. slot. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely right, Will. 
I mean, I think that's important for exhibitors and handlers to understand that there's more to it than just getting a standard in your head and saying that one matches it way more. Oh. Uh, Frank Kane has a good article about the psychology of judging. It just popped up again. Um, Frank's a smart guy and good guy. But uh, let's see if I can find it and send it to you because it's really yeah. good. It's a lot about I appreciate that. that. Yeah. Good guy. Good guy. Well, young William, I've got to take my brother for glasses. All right. Um, and I, uh, I have a, 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 somebody's coming soon to drop off something for me. So I need to be here. Bandages? Uh, the bandages, bandages, yeah. yeah. And I have, uh, Will and I, you know, a lot of people know that we, we tend to do the same similar things without discussing it. But our newest rage this year is you get sick, I get sick. You need a procedure, I need a procedure. You need an operation, I need an operation. What is going on? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Watch this. <laughs> I'll raise your hernia. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's though. just happened lately. I liked it better when it was just shoes. Oh, we have the same shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was way better. <laughs> but the, So we apologize for the couple we've missed lately, um, but it's all about that. Either one of us is... is uh, under the weather, getting a test, uh, yeah. we just can't get it together. But Someone to break that year, odometer and dial it back for us. It was too yeah, many yeah. miles, too many miles, That's waiter. True. Hey, we're among the youngest on the pal, <laughs> even though we're not young. <laughs> and it shocked me. I'll judge all day long, and I am bloody exhausted. And then there's Elaine Whitney, <laughs> and she's like, let's go have dinner. <laughs> He's judged all day, too. <laughs> yeah, let's try to keep up with Pat Trotter. Good luck with oh. that. Oh, unbelievable <laughs> and by the way dana klein who judges every weekend he's an all-arounder we only have seven i think it's seven it might be six now but um he was so good at still the energy and passion when i observed under him about water span and then we, of course we talked about it all day but his energy and his preciseness and knowing he's got this down travel clothes all the things you need to think yeah. about and know about he's got that down and that comes from practice over and over but that and over kind again. of personality is infectious and it keeps you going it is it, oh. it is well that's a good point yeah. yeah um and he always does it with a smile you know he's yeah. always and in he it does a great job he carries yeah. it off he does a great job you know you'd, you'd be thrilled to have dana on your panel every week you know it's just any one, breed. one of those people yeah. Yeah, any breed and he loves discussing it with you too um he knows all those details and that's the kind of people we need but uh, it takes judging every weekend. I'm not sure I ever want to do that. Uh, no, I, I, I'm exhausted as it is. I don't know. You're and in better we'll... shape than we are, Will, in judging, <laughs> in judging condition, in judging shape. Yeah. Anyway, you know, they've got their routine. Uh, I drove this weekend, which is so much easier. I love so driving. Stress. Yeah, yeah, I love driving. I'm, I'm doing a seminar in North Carolina in a few weeks, and, and the woman, Cindy, Cindy uh, Weaver, Messaged me what flight I was coming on. I was coming on my flight on my Equinox. That's a flight I'm coming <laughs> in. And it's because I much prefer the drive. I... Equinox Airlines. Equinox yep. Airlines. Yeah. There you go. Flight number will. Yeah. Well, okay, bud. Uh, All right. Hockey's just warming up here. Yeah, and dog exactly. shows are too. Uh, Both know, are exciting equally. And we have to, and you always mention this at the end of the year. So we'll get it in early so people can think about it. When Orlando's over, what do people say? Wait till next year. <laughs> we finally we get a break until yeah. next year. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. And, and, show and it's, later. We we hustle all year long when I was handler, and then the new year comes and it just starts over again. And people forget about last year. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, you could have done some horrible things last year, and it's just like a reset button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's true. But, Hey, my article about uh, the, the discussion about Canadian judges and American judges and easier requirements and judging down here and yeah. all that is out. It just came out this week in the Canon Chronicle. I hope it's positive for both parties. <laughs> oh, it's funny because I, I was telling you, Charlie was there this weekend. We were talking yeah. and he said, we are one of the few all breed couples. And he said, you guys have 40 million up here. <laughs> Half no, of them, don't, Charlie. <laughs> well, half of the ones that are members of the uh, Canadian Dark Side judges are all breed. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're hiring people. There are good ones and bad ones. No, and, just like anywhere else. Yeah. I had so much fun with those two because when one was judging, yeah, I was agree. sitting with the other one, and they were bitching about the one. Oh, bitching, of course. But, you, know, <laughs> you see what Charlie just did? I would never do that. What's wrong with him? <laughs> so yeah, much fun. Best. So much. And fun. they love it. They love judging. They love. They do, it. and they and they they and they love going to shows together. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool thing. That's a cool thing. All right, bud. All right. Go. Peace with, be with you and with your hockey. And everybody stay safe out there and we'll see you down the road. Pretty ungood. No way. Way. Better be paying attention, Doc. Thanks for the <laughs> so Ernie can use this in the blooper reel. That's right. We love you, Ernie. Don't put that in, Ernie. <laughs> Quit taking yourself so damn seriously. I'm falling apart. Don't press. Some extraordinary data. Things that are being done around the world. Thanks, 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 Ernie. We didn't mention hockey. Isn't that unbelievable? Put that in, Doc. Yeah, they let us see it in the blueprint. Uh, this is good. We're going to be here in a second, Wayner. Don't lose it, Doc. Hot. Hot. Don't use that one, Doc. Don't use that one, Doc.